Hello again everybody and welcome back to Modeling from the Ensign's Chair. I'm Will. This is episode 5 of our Enterprise Refit Smoothie Build. Um, last episode when I left off we were working on getting our hull windows straight, our secondary hull. And uh, I think I finally got mine uh, working, looking pretty good. I uh, do need to bone up on my uh, oval window making skills because they're not the greatest. but. Uh, I'm, I'm satisfied with them. I'll probably try to do a little more fiddling with them. Um, I don't want to do too much because I tend to make them uh, oversized if I mess with them too much. But uh, I've got both my uh, sides of my secondary hull done and uh, primed. And uh, I do have a couple of uh, couple of grid lines I'm still going to have to uh, redo. But uh, I'll work on that as we go along. Uh, what I want to focus on on this episode is uh, I want to work some more on the hole section, on the uh, primary, well, the, the saucer section. And uh, I want to get some work done on that because um, this week I should be receiving in my windows that I've been waiting on uh, and the windows for the rec deck for the back here. So I want to start getting this ready to go um, so that way once I get those windows in and um, get everything the way I want it, we can finally maybe start doing some lighting and some, uh, some sub-assemblies and start getting some stuff together and start making it look like a ship. So, um, like I said, this episode, focus on the uh, hull, put you on the table, and we'll get to work. All right, so what I'm starting off with here is uh, working on, continuing to work with my uh, Paragraphics Photo Itch templates. And uh, this one here is for the windows, which I've already taped up, but uh, <clears throat> it's for our windows for the underside of the saucer. You can see here uh, where I marked in red, not a big difference, if you can see where those red marks are, as to where these windows are going to end up. Um, the main thing is these two windows here are going to be better centered over the uh, phaser bank, whereas right now this one, or actually this one is a little bit closer, just a little bit closer, and it's that way for all three of them. But, uh, we're going to get those filled in and redrill them uh, because the other issue with this is too is that these windows are a little bit oversized. Um, they're a little bit larger than what they need to be uh, for the scale. So we're going to go ahead and get those filled in. And uh, basically all you need to do if you're going to do this, and you don't have to fill these in as always. Um, it's up to you whether you just use the, leave the windows as they are, whether you, you get the paragraphics kit and fill them in. But if you're going to fill them in, just take a piece of tape and stick it, stick it over it. And uh, the other thing I want to say too is I, I had mentioned before about using the uh, JB Weld uh, plastic bonder for filling in windows, but uh, I've been having a little bit of an issue with this uh, sanding very well. It doesn't sand very well. So while it's good for joining uh, joints together and, and other things, uh, I, I decided to try something else. And what I've been using and having better luck with is uh, the Permatex 5 minute epoxy. Um, I've been using this. I use this on all the windows for uh, the secondary hull. I've had a lot better luck with this sanding a little better than the uh, uh, the JB Weld stuff. So that's what I'm going to use to fill these windows in. It's going to take a little bit and squeeze it in the dish. We don't need a whole lot there, so get that. And again, remember, uh, you need to mix this stuff up really well. You got about, it says, again, just like with the JB Weld, this says you got about a five minute work period, but uh, <laughs> if you really want it to get down into uh, these, these small window holes like this, uh, you've got about three minutes tops before it starts getting too thick to really get it up in there. It's, it's already kind of thick as it is. Um, it's considerably thicker than the JB Weld. Um, but So we've got this taped in the front. All we're going to do is take this and start filling our holes from the back. Try to push it in there, make sure we get plenty into the holes so this stuff fills in real well. If you get it to fill in real well, it leaves a nice smooth surface and you don't have to do a whole lot of sanding with this um, when you fill it in from the back like this. Hold that tape in front, make sure it doesn't pop out. Window filling 101. Take a whole lot. Make sure we get it in there real good. And we got to work 
pretty quick with this because like I said we only have a couple minutes to get this in there uh, before this stuff's going to become really too thick to fill in all the way to the front. And this stuff does set up pretty quick. Uh, like it says, it's a 5 minute epoxy, but uh, it also tells you on the label uh, to allow 24 hours for, for a full cure. So um, you can actually start uh, working with this stuff. And I've, I've waited uh, maybe two or three hours and come back and started sanding it. And it actually sands pretty well after about two or three hours. So, but um, to get a full cure out of it, it does say to allow 24 hours. So, I'm going to let that set up. And uh, what I want to work on real quick is um, we've got this these uh, docking doors for our port side that we're going to put on real quick. This only takes a minute to do. But what you're looking for is you need your port side. So, and the directions tell you all of this. Basically, all you're going to do is you're going to take your, your, your grid line here, the one that goes through the phaser bank, on your port side and just follow that up and uh, get my super glue. And we don't need much super glue for this. And you don't have to do any pre work preparing the surface for this, other than I've sanded it to make sure that uh, I get good contact with the uh, plastic and not over the paint. But uh, this is supposed to sit above. Or, or be raised so you don't want to take away any of the plastic so we're basically just going to stick it on there get it in place real quick before this uh, super glue starts to set up slide it in place and There you go. It's on there. So those are two uh, real quick things that we can go over and uh, get done on this. Um, still waiting on my windows for this. And uh, I'm going to work a little bit on uh, some of this top section here. Because uh, like I had pointed out from the start, uh, no phaser banks. Just a little blank spot there. So what I did was I made this little template sitting on here. And uh, I'm going to cut out some styrene to go in each of these three spots to give it a little bit of a raise because right now there's no raise to it. And then I'm going to come back and uh, thankfully to uh, some suggestions, uh, I've got a fix for there not being any bumps there. So give me a minute. I'm going to work on cutting out these raised parts out of styrene and then we'll come back and see about putting in those little bumps on it. All right, well, so I got uh, my first phaser bank done. And uh, I'm, I'm really liking the look of this. Uh, about a month ago on the uh, Star Trek Modelers group on Facebook, and if you're not a member of that, join it because there's a lot of great information on there. And this is one example of that. Um, the issue I had with this model is there's no phaser banks on it. It's uh, the smoothie before they uh, added those in later models, there's nothing there. It's just a flat, smooth spot where the uh, phaser bank's supposed to go. So uh, I had uh, asked you know, for ideas on, well, how do I correct that? So a lot of great ideas were uh, presented. And uh, one of the ideas was to, um, they sell beads. And I'll tell you exactly what I used here. Um, I got these from uh, Hobby Lobby. And these are 2.4 millimeter. Um, it says metal gallery, but these are basically, uh, these are basically beads. Just like that. Unfortunately, there's a whole bunch of them because I've then dropped about five or six of these, so uh, they're kind of slippery. But uh, they are uh, 2.4 millimeter. There's 400 of them in here, and uh, they said, "Hey, you get some of these, and then you drill a, a hole, not all the way through, but just enough to make a depression." And uh, so for that, I used my uh, let's see what size drill bit was this? This was a uh, three thirty seconds. A 3 30 seconds drill bit um, in my pin vise here and uh, 
All I did was, uh, like I said, I cut out a piece of styrene to uh, make that raised detail. And then I drilled just a little bit of a depression for these to slip into with the uh, 330 seconds drill bit. And then I um, took one of these beads and I plopped them in there and uh, super glued them in place. And uh, you can see the result there. They look pretty good. I think I might have to do this with all my uh, phaser banks from now on. Because uh, I think these are going to turn out really nice. Uh, you, basically, you're left with two holes here, which you can leave it like that, which I might. Um, or the idea was you could stick something in there and leave a little protrusion, and that's uh, you get that little protrusion for your phaser bank. But uh, I actually kind of like the way it looks with just the two holes sitting there. So, uh, eh, we'll see. I might just leave it like that. But uh, I think that turned out pretty well. It only took me about uh, eh, 15 minutes maybe to get that one done. So I uh, still got to do a little sanding around the edge here to get this uh, raised area to look good. But uh, I think it actually looks pretty good already. So I'm going to continue with that. And uh, I've got two more here. And uh, then I've got to work on my underside is also uh, the same way. It's I can't lift this too much because I've got uh, my epoxy still drying under there. But you can see there that uh, no phaser bank, still smooth surface. So I'm going to have to do that to all of those. So that's going to take me a little bit of work, and uh, once I get that done, we'll come back and uh, we'll start on something else. Alright, so I've uh, got my phaser banks done. Turned out pretty well. I like the look. Like I said, I might have to start doing this even with the ones that do already have the phaser banks on it. So, it's looking pretty good. Um, the only other thing I really want to do to this top section before I go back to uh, working on the bottom of the saucer here. Uh, this should be about cured. Um, as I want to work on this uh, officer's lounge window on the back here, I've got the paragraphics kit part here uh, to replace that. So pretty much just like uh, we went over with the Arboretum windows, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go in. I'm going to go in and I'm going to cut this out, but just enough to where these windows will fit over and you won't see any plastic. And then what we want to do is we want to create a little bit of a ledge around, a little bit of a ledge around the outside of it. For this to rest into uh, so that way it'll fit in there something like that we're going to be careful on this part though because uh, we don't want to remove any of the uh, this lower ledge or this upper ledge here or this upper overhang all right so we want to just take out these windows uh, take out these windows first I'm just going to cut straight across these windows see how this part fits and uh, if it fits without any more plastic showing through the opening, I'm going to just take away a little bit of plastic just to make a ledge, an indent for this to fit into. And then we'll glue it in place. So uh, give me a couple minutes and we'll be back. Alright, so I've got the uh, officer's lines window drilled out in the back there. You can see I left uh, a little bit of a lip around it for that uh, paragraphics part to hold on to let me just stick it right in place here and you can see it'll fit in there right nicely all you gotta do is glue it in and uh, a little bit of putty and she should be good to go so I'm gonna work on that and we'll check back here in a couple minutes All right, everybody, so I've got the uh, officer's lounge window in place. Looking pretty good. Got to do a little fine sanding, but i got to find my uh, 1,000 grit sandpaper. So i got it around here somewhere, but uh, it's looking pretty good so far. I'm just looking at my studio images on the computer here just to uh, get an idea, make sure everything looks right. I'm going to have to uh, I'm gonna work on these windows um, around the BC deck as well here shortly. And we'll get those looking right. But uh, what I had come in today is I had all my uh, windows finally come in. Let's go around the saucer section here. So let's take a look at those. These are all the replacement windows and. 
You can see they've got the correct spacing between these two bottom windows here. Get that where you can see that. These two windows down the bottom here. So those are correctly done. Now, let's set that aside. These window inserts um, are actually going to have to. I'm actually going to have to. I have to do a little work making these openings a little bit wider, which is fine because uh, when I started having that issue before, some of these chipped off on the end. So that actually works out because uh, now I can go in and uh, cut these out a little bit more like they need to be and then get these in place. Um, and then I've got to come back and I've got to make my openings on the back here yet as well for the uh, rec deck. So I'm going to start working on that. Um, but also just so I can show you, uh, I was talking about the uh, the Permatex 5-minute epoxy. And uh, I don't know if you can make it out too well on here, but you see how smooth those windows come out when you tape it from the front and put that epoxy in there. So very little sanding is going to be needed for that, if any at all. Um, but I'm going to work on uh, getting these uh, windows redrilled as well and getting these inserts in place and uh, then we'll come back and take a look and see what we got. Alright everybody, so I've got uh, got all my windows, my saucer edge windows in place. Still got a little more sand and a little more filling to do to get them to uh, fit in there nicely but uh, you can see that uh, rec deck window starting to look pretty good. So I got all those in, like I said I got a little more work to do getting those sanded and filled and get rid of those seams, but uh, they're turning out pretty good. Um, I also went ahead and got my uh, windows re-drilled on the lower saucer. So that's all done. And uh, the other thing I did too is I uh, went ahead and attached this photo etch piece to the back of the uh, bridge. I got a little sanding and filling I got to do on that as well, but it's all together. And uh, the last thing I just did was um, I just went back and filled in and redrilled all the holes or the uh, windows around my BC deck. And uh, I gotta say, once again, I had an issue with the uh, photo etch template not matching up to uh, where those windows needed to be. Um, so again, if you know if you don't want to mess with it, you can just leave those windows as they are. Uh, it didn't move them a little bit, um, but actually, I had to move these in a different direction than what the uh, photo etch was trying to do. Um, in actuality, let's see if I get this matched up here. It's trying to, uh, this photo etch is trying to pull your windows all the way around the front here. And uh, that's not where they're supposed to be. You can see uh, from right there, if I can get in the camera right, you can see where the windows on the photo etch says they need to be and where I actually drilled them, which is correct looking at the uh, picture of the studio model here. Um, these uh, first set of windows actually should be, you got your phaser bank here, and uh, you've got a panel line that runs through that phaser bank, and then your next line over almost splits those two windows. It's a little bit more towards the, the rear window than it is the front window. So um, what I did was I just uh, eyeballed it and lined them up and lined them up on that panel line right there and drilled them according to what I see on the screen as far as the studio model. Same thing with uh, the set of windows back here. Uh, one of the windows that was already there was actually good so I just re-drilled it where I filled it in and then I drilled another one close to it. But uh, so I got those I think where I need them to be and I've got this back oval window somewhat there but I'm terrible at oval windows so I'm going to have to work on that a little bit more. But uh, yeah so it's uh, it's coming together. There's that officer's window and uh, I got my photons done on the top. I still need to do them on the lower half of the saucer and get those done. Um, but I've run over those so you know how to do those so I'm going to work on those. Um, I've been looking at the, uh, the Arboretum from, Spa um, from Shapeways, which is, uh, I believe this is uh, Spaceways parts. 
on Shapeways. So I got a little detailing to do on that, but I've got a light primer coat on it right now. Uh, I am having an issue with this officer's deck or the, uh, the officer's lounge uh, that came with this set because um, it doesn't quite fit where you need it to go. It's, uh, it's a little too tall and it doesn't sit in there properly. So I'm going to have to work on that. Um, probably have to file some stuff down or maybe fill something in. i got to look at it and figure that out. But uh, I'll get it in there. It's just going to take some work. It doesn't quite fit into place like I was hoping it would. Uh, and then uh, we've got the, the rec deck here, which i got to watch this back wall because that thing is a little flimsy. But, uh, the rec deck, I'm not going to worry too much about getting too into detail with it because, to be honest with you, as small as these uh, windows are, I don't think you're going to be able to. Uh, I don't think you're going to be able to see too much of those through those windows once I uh, put some micro crystal clear in there. But uh, we'll see. I'll do a little bit of detail to it and get that in place. This also sits a little high, so I might have to. Um, it looks like it sits a little high. I'm going to have to test fit it and maybe shave it down a little bit from the top. But we'll get that to fit in there as well. So I've got those things to work on. But other than that, um, we're pretty much, or I'm pretty much done with all the alterations I need to do to my sub-assemblies. So um, I've got my uh, nacelles pretty much where I, I need to be as far as to start assembling. I do still need to repaint those uh, grid lines though inside the vent there. Uh, my dorsal section is as far as I need to get. Uh, I've just got this photon from uh, Wally Cody's workshop sitting in there right now. I don't have it glued in place yet because I'm uh, still working on it. But uh, i got to figure out how I'm going to block this off and so I can light the photon tubes without the interfering or any interference from the internal lights for the windows. So I'm going to work on that. Um, I've got my secondary hull. I've got... All my windows redrilled, my arboretum, arboretum windows are in place. So I think what I'm going to do is um, actually next week I'm going to be out of town. So I apologize, but there's probably not going to be an episode next week unless I get home and I'm able to put something out before the end of the weekend, but we'll see. But uh, what I'm probably going to do while I'm out of town is uh, I'm going to take my uh, plan on taking my green strawberry kit and uh, work on trying to get that together. Uh, so. That's probably what I'm going to work on next week. Uh, I'm probably not going to go too much into the sub-assembly of this because there's directions inside. Um, if there's anything intriguing or uh, anything that I think might help somebody else out, I'll make sure I do a quick video on it and cover that. But I don't want to spend too much time recording um, video to go over this sub-assembly here. But uh, with that, I think... Um, other than that, I have nothing left for the photo etch. All the photo etches are in place except for our uh, impulse vents, which can't go on until I connect the dorsal section to the uh, saucer. So uh, we we'll got to wait on that. And of course, uh, the rec deck windows, I went with the uh, shapeways part, um, as well as with the photon launcher, so I'm not using that. And then I've got some extra uh, docking port uh, doors here I can use later. So that's pretty much it for the uh, paragraphics kit and uh, all my shapeways parts are in place except for like I said these pieces here I've got to uh, do some more detailing on those before I can install them and those will get installed later anyway as we start on the build so I'm not in too much of a, a pre uh, too much pressure to get that done I am going to have to uh, shave a little bit off the edge of the uh, rec deck here because it doesn't quite sit down flush enough um, for the uh, arboretum windows so that's about it. Um, I'm going to start working on just kind of smoothing out, finalizing some details. I'm going to get those uh, phaser banks done on the bottom. Um, I do have one little boo-boo right here. I've got a fill where I drilled a little bit too high on the window. And uh, other than that, it's just uh, pretty much going to be sitting here and doing some uh, final work and detailing work and getting everything looking good so I can start doing the assemblies. So I think that's going to do it for this episode. Um, if you have any questions, post them below. If you got any comments or suggestions on anything, please feel free to post those below as well. If you like what you see here, you got any use out of any of the information, please hit that like button. 
And uh, if you want to get the future updates for uh, any new episodes when they come out, just uh, hit that subscribe button and we'll get them out to you. Till next time, keep modeling.